um, I am going to bring up a, a Syrian American actor and activist. I mean, if there was an award uh, for the best American dream, uh, Jay Abdo is definitely deserving of one. So please give a hearty welcome to Jay Abdo. Thank you so much. Thank you, Muslims for progressive values, for inviting me and for having such an amazing event that we really need. Okay. Okay, I'll be using this mic. Uh, I'm going to read a story about a guy that I was a little bit luckier than he was and I made it out. What good is to be alive while others die from sorrow over you? My name is Ashraf Fayyad. My father's is from the half-forgotten land of Palestine. My family moved from there to live as refugees in Saudi Arabia. They wanted to give me a better life away from all the violence and the strife of our home country. And so we moved somewhere that was more stable. But stability has its price. Saudi Arabia is a very strict place. In the name of Islam and Sharia law, men, women, and children are forced to think and exist according to a very conservative tradition. So this is my story in Saudi Arabia. I had a place to rest my head, but not the freedom to use my head the way I'd like. I had food to feed my hunger, but nothing to feed my hungry soul. I had a place to rest my tired body, but nowhere for the dignity of my human body. Life in this hard land hurt me into poetry and I became an artist. My work was featured in exhibits all around the country and my poetry was trans translated into multiple languages. I was able to express my thoughts and my loneliness and my beliefs to all the world and yet one day in 2014 I was arrested, jailed, tried and convicted with apostasy. Apostasy is when someone renounces his or her religion. In Saudi Arabia, apostasy is an accusation that is easy for the state to make, but difficult for the accused to defend. How could anyone point a finger at what I believe? Could anyone look at me and say that this artist with a ponytail renounces Islam? And what is the crime in that anyway? For the Saudi Kingdom, it's a capital offense. It was a trumped up charge. They said my book, instructions from within contained content that was against Islam. That wasn't true, but I was not the judge. Judges played God. Because of my crime, they then sentenced me to be beheaded. Beheaded. Like an animal. In the 21st century, society still think its best response to crime is an act that is more mindless and cruel than the crime itself. When the sentence was named, my poor father had a stroke. I never had the chance to say goodbye to him. He departed for good. Because of me, let's say, he could not bear the thought that I'd die before him. My father died and left death to besiege me. The soldiers besieged me on all fronts, in uniforms of poor color. Laws and regimes and statutes besiege me. Sovereignty besieges me. 
a highly concentrated instinct that living creatures cannot shake. My loneliness besieges me. My loneliness chocks me. I am chocked by depression, nervousness, worry. Remorse that I am a member of the human race kills me. I was unable to say goodbye to all those I love and who departed even temporarily. I was unable to leave a good impression of the last meeting. Then I yielded to the rifles of Wanging, leveled my way, I refused to raise my hand and become incapacitated. Then I was bound to sorrow that failed to force me to tears. Thank God, sentence was never carried out. A group of lawyers defended me, and the sentence was overturned in February of 2016. What kindness in their hearts. They spared me from death, but sentenced me to suffer eight years in prison and to bear 800 lashes on my back. What is more, what is worse, that they've asked me to renounce my poetry. I will not renounce, I will not renounce the beauty that I have made and give into ugliness and repression. My poetry is mine and I am proud of it. If they want to hear renouncement, let them renounce. Let them renounce their laws which violate our freedom and equality. Let them renounce their death sentence, which violates our right of life. Let them renounce their flogging that violate our human dignity. I am no apost apostate, but their Islam is not my Islam. My Islam is one of love and acceptance for all. My Islam is one of enlightenment and understanding. My Islam is one of peace and never violence. I'm no expert on religion, but I know that God, Allah, is greater than the law that is, he inspires. To worship laws and forget the creator, that is apostasy. I sit here in a cell now I have the luxury of time. A legal team is battling to overturn my sentence. So, so many people don't have this privilege. The boy who struggles to, to, to develop these ideas is a prisoner just like me. I would not be freer outside this prison cell. I would just be safer. That must change. I'm in good health and staying positive, and I'm al but I'm alone. Only my mother visits me twice a, twice a week. I just hope I will survive and that people continue to remember me. I am scared to be forgotten. This is my story. My name is Ashraf Fayyad. Thank you so very much. <laughs>